A and B, if you got the concept right about power dissipation with the capacitor and inductor, you could just answer it in a couple seconds. But uh, C and D, um, one, it act involves actual calculation. And I, looking at it again, there are places where people can definitely make mistakes. So I want to highlight that. So, so let me get started there. Uh, I think with this question, I would uh, like to just do it on screen. Um, so let me bring my Zoom annotations to. Um, so, okay. Um, so the question says, uh, so it, the question gives us, um, let me highlight some pieces of information that will be relevant. It gives me some applied voltage and it's uh, saying it's applied across a capacitor, inductor, and then register. And I guess I should draw a picture describing um, the circuit that's being described in words, uh, which is uh, you have an AC voltage source that's uh, described by the expression given here. And it's connected to a single element. That's uh, really the important part because if it's uh, say connected to a series RLC circuit, then your answer will change. So it's connected to a single element here. And what it's um, asking is for part A, what if the single element is capacitor? And for part B, what if the single element is an inductor? And finally for part C, what if the single element is a register? And um, so for capacitor and inductor, once you um, conceptually understand that there is no power dissipation in capacitors and inductors, then you can arrive at this answer of zero watt uh, of average power output um, relatively quickly. And you can mathematically prove it too, but um, you know, once we have the <laughs> right answer, then <laughs> why waste time? So, so let me do part C. It asks uh, for what is the average power output with the register. And this is the place where I thought uh, someone could easily make this mistake where you think, all right, power output of um, um, with a voltage source and a register, you get these uh, three expressions, um, current times voltage, or you can rewrite it using given parameters um, either uh, v squared over r or i squared r. Um, so this is these are the expressions you have seen. And um, you might think, okay, I have a voltage here. I have resistance here. So let's use this expression. And um, if you get this far and type in v squared, ad squared divided by resistance, 85, and enter 75.3 watt, um, it'll say the answer you type in is wrong, or it should, yeah, <laughs> it should say it wrong. <laughs> and it has to do with, if you are going through this carefully, uh, you know, more carefully than what I just did now, you might have seen it at some point. It's uh, this average portion. And when you average this, it's not going to be simply uh, V naught squared over R. It's because when you have a voltage as a function of time that looks like this, so it looks a sinusoidal like this. And what I mark here, um, uh, let me just mark this as one <laughs> so that but I, I don't have to worry about scaling in my graphs. Uh, when you square this, uh, up to, in this scale, this is what it's gonna look like. The square will have only ever reach up to one. So it'll uh, always be oscillating. I need to do this correctly. It'll be oscillating something like this. Uh, zero here and then comes back here and then zero here comes back here. So when you take the average, the, um, so, you know, when you take the square first and then the average. Uh, so I did a square in red here. And when you take the average, that average is going to be actually only one half. And uh, I think I actually covered this before um, when I was talking more about the general uh, use of complex numbers with the AC circuits. 
And um, so if there's a formula that you're using or whatever, so there's a factor of one half that comes from the average. Um, I guess, you know, factor of one half you see so often that, um, that sometimes you have to struggle, you have to take care to remember why there's a factor of one half because sometimes it comes for different reasons. Um, there were places where you have seen factor of one half from integration. Here, this factor of one half, you see it from, um, you see it from, well, you know, I guess it could be still integration, but you see, you get it from the average, that, that's why. Um, so I actually divided this by half to get the correct answer, 37.6. And this is why um, it's, uh, the question is asking about the RMS voltage of the AC source. Because when you're dealing with something like this, like average power, you don't really want to be dealing in terms of the amplitude because amplitude squared over R will give you the wrong answer. So this, uh, so the correct answer here is um, V naught squared over two over R. That's the correct answer for the average of the power. And what you, the quantity that I have here, this quantity here is what I would identify as um, let me just rewrite this in a cleaner form here. Uh, v squared average. So this combination here is the average of the, you know, V as a function of time squared, um, well, average. So when we call something RMS, um, the operation that you need to have done in the reverse order is root mean square. I guess I don't really know the reason why, but you have to imagine up, applying these operations in the reverse order, square, mean, and then root. So here I've done the square and I've done the mean, and this is what you get when you do, you know, square and mean. And now I need for the V RMS, I need to take the square root of the quantity, V not squared over two. And uh, depending on the waveform, um, the numerical coefficient, can be different or should be different. For sinusoidal functions, the numerical coefficient to in front will be one over square root of two. So, so um, AD is my amplitude. So my RMS voltage uh, that should be divided by square root of, oh, square root of uh, two. So let me do AD divided by, uh, I think the way that this calculator works, I have to do two, two square root. Of, yeah, so press equal. Yeah, fifty-six point six volts. And once you have that, then um, then with the RMS voltage, you can actually say stuff like this: that the average power is equal to V RMS squared over two because all the necessary operation that you need to do to get to the average has already been done. So, um, and in fact, um, so in US, the, the, the household power output voltage, they say it's 110 volts. And whenever people tell you the voltage, uh, size of the voltage over any AC source, um, there's the question you need to ask, um, is it peak voltage, is it peak to peak voltage, or is it RMS voltage? <laughs> because the uh, same waveform that looks uh, like this, so a same waveform that looks like this, could have three different descriptions for how large it is. That all sound different, but are described in the same way. So this would be peak to peak voltage, or if you're measuring only down to zero, that will be peak voltage. Or if you do the RMS thing, then I guess it's somewhere around here should be the RMS. And whenever you are interested in power, it's uh, more common to specify voltage or current magnitude in RMS. So 110 volts per household voltage, that's actually RMS voltage. So if you are measuring peak to peak, you actually get 
something that's uh, greater than 200 volts because 110 RMS, that means peak voltage is like 130, 140. So peak to peak is like 300 volts. Um, so anyway, I guess that's not relevant to this question. <laughs> As usual, if any questions come up, please let me know. Uh, I'll clear all this and then move on.